Yeah. Now, David, off the top, Collingwood set up their 2023 premiership 12 months ago at the trade table, or at least helped set up their 2023 premiership. Is there a club this year that can achieve something similar over the next couple of weeks and set themselves up for a flag in 2024? Well, everyone's going to talk about Sydney, aren't they, and what they've done because of the volume of players they're bringing in. But sometimes it's about just getting the right player to solve the problems um, that others have left behind. I think Lockie Schultz from Collingwood is a massive get. Right. This is a guy, I think he's a poor man's papley is what I'm referring him uh, to be because he's a pressure player, he's a goal kicker, he's done it for three, four, five years, he's not a flash in the pan, Max. Mm. So I, I think to bring an energy provider into your football club is is seriously good. Um, Craig McRae will have him smiling and we'll see him come up that race with a big smile on his face playing high-level football. So I, I think sometimes just look at those small pressure forwards that get the job done. I'm going with Lockie Shields. He's a unique player too because they play him quite a bit more as that isolated forward in a bit of a Jamie Elliott role. Mm. So you do wonder if he is the Elliott replacement going forward and a bit of a Elliott McCreary mix as a player bringing that pressure but also what is he second in their goal kicking this year at Freo. Do you worry about Jack Ginevan's mm. future though? No, I think it's okay to have healthy selection pressure at your football club. I mean, they had that all year this year. Yep. And, and in the end, they got – they. <laughs> Bobby Hill was able to do what he was able to do after being endorsed at, um, right throughout the season from Craig McRae. So he felt loved and performed on the bigger stages through uh, September. And Jack was challenged to get fitter, get better, knuckle down, do the hard work. Uh, and he found himself, a, I think, a critical component as a sub in the back half of the season. So I think they won on, on both fronts. Now, others can say he's the easy replacement. It's okay to have 30 players, viable uh, options for your 23 every week. Collingwood are going to be busy again at the trade period, it says. Not ne not necessarily of players coming in, but there's a couple going out though, Skeeter. At Collingwood, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, there's a fair bit happening there. And obviously uh, we know that Taylor Adams, a player who just missed out, obviously on selection, the hamstring tightness that uh, ruled him out of the grand final. So he moves on to a new club in Sydney Swans. That's going to get that deal done. But It's interesting uh, how Sydney's basically reuniting the 2019 <laughs> Collingwood centre bounce combo with Grundy, Grundy and Adams. Adams. You know, and they got pretty close, and it's certainly helping a midfield that was their flaw. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned Sydney earlier off the top, and it makes so much sense that they would be going quite hard because they fell down a little bit to mid-table, but we know they can get to that grand final spot because their list was so young yet successful in 2022. Mm. They can very easily be back there I, in I don't, 24. I don't think they want for much. And as you say, it's about just tinkering and making sure you just have the right people in place. I think Taylor Adams, they won't miss him too much. I think their midfield has been a pretty good commodity mm. without him as well, even though he's a very loyal and very good player for them. And uh, I think he fits a role at Sydney for sure. And Schultz is a very good inclusion, like you said, Kingy. Get back to the Swans. The Swans haven't been tough enough for a long, long time. Particularly against the top teams? Particularly against the best teams in the games that have mattered most. And I think a lot of that comes down to they don't have that big-bodied midfielder. Robon's probably their biggest. Parker plays big, but he's not Patrick Cripps. He's not uh, Patrick Dangerfield. So if you haven't got that, I think it's 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 seriously important for you to get a ruckman that can at least give you some direction or some advantage with the hit-out work. Grundy does that. Mm. Everyone's judging his year this year uh, being disappointing because of his forward craft. He doesn't have any forward craft. He's a, he's a 100% game time, 100% Ruckman. Yep. So just just leave him in there. That's what the Swans will do. And you'll see their, so their, their clearance profile in terms of scores, four scores against the differential, 14th in the comp this year. That has to change from to be a, a viable premiership option. And their post-clearance contested possession stuff around the ground, being able to win your own, own ball, they're 11th. So they need him to get involved in this. They need Adams to come and be a contributor here. They need Hamling to, to stand up down back and allow McCartan to be more for them. I, I like what they've done. You've got to have the courage to get it wrong to win the flag. Well, the Bombers, uh, the Swans are going to be busy, but the Bombers are also going to be busy today uh, and right throughout the trade period, Zita. You were at Marvel Stadium yes. for the frantic nature of all 18 club representatives speaking to the media. Adrian Dodoro in his, I don't know how many he's done, but he's certainly in his last, it sounds yes. like. And today he just dropped, uh, not bombshells, but just sort of dropped hint after hint that he's going to be tough to deal with again. Brandon Zirk Thatcher, no, uncontracted, what? required player. Yes. Dylan Shield not going anywhere, and that seems to have really grown some legs. Xavier Dersma, we found out late, wants to get to the Bombers. Jade Gresham and Ben Mackay also wanted to get to the Bombers. But he started his press conference with expect the unexpected. Is he going out with a, 
on a high here. I think, he, I think, think he, it's the Adrian Dodoro way. I think he doesn't want to make it about himself, I'm sure, but oh. a, bit, a bit of swagger. And obviously his last trade period at the helm before he hands it over to Matt Rosa and moves into a different role at the club still. But um, they're, they're one of the major players of this trade period uh, in terms of ins and outs and in terms of volume. I'm interested, Kingy, what you think of the people that they're targeting. Because Sydney have gone out on a needs basis. They've got the right people. Do you think Essendon are doing the same thing with the ones that they're targeting? Because they're bringing a few in. Oh, it's interesting. We just talked about Lockie Schultz. I mean, is Schultz a better version than as a small forward goal-kicking option than Jade Gresham? I, I would say he would be. So yeah. already a club that's already at that level pick up a player, in my opinion, that's better than what you're getting. Dersma, what, what is Dersma? Is he, a, is he an interceptor? Is he a pressure player? Wingman. Is he a wingman? Is he a, is he an elite wingman? Does he, does he have the potential to be an elite wingman? I, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I don't see it yet is, is the simple answer. Mackay is a beauty. We, we understand that he's going to go down back and, and lock up that fullback position. But I'm just, I'm just not as in love with the Essendon list right now as what others are. They've done a very good job in years gone by of getting good players into the club yep. and paying quite a bit for them through free agency. The good thing about these moves that they're making is that they're not going to be trading huge picks for them. They understand that free agency, the benefit it has is not trading out those high picks, which you still need to take, can let you bring in young talent to the club while also pushing for a flag, which I guess they think they can sort of contend for next year because they are making a lot of moves, potentially four or five ins, a couple of outs as well. But I guess they think they can contend. Well, they are players in the mid-20s. They're still players who've got a fair room of development. I think Gresham's a bit yes. older, but Dersma's young. Mackay's only, I think, 24, 25. He's still got a fair bit of football in him. So I think they're trying to build towards their next flag. So are they 11 year. wins heading north or 11 wins hovering or 11 wins heading south? I, I, I don't – right now, I don't see it. If you look at the guys, the, the picks that they've traded the last uh, half a dozen years. So I go to the last seven years. They've had nine picks inside the top 30 and traded a lot of those others around to get Stringer, Saad, Devin Smith, Shield. So those guys now have run their course. Some have retired. Some have been traded. Um, so 17 and 18 now. There's a line through those yeah. those national drafts. Harrison Jones at 30 in pick uh, in 2019. Where's Har- is is he going to make it? Is he not? We still don't know. Cox, Perkins, and Reed. We love Co- um, Perkins. We haven't seen Cox do it yet, and we haven't seen Reed at all. So there's a, there's a there's a real question mark for me over a four year period at the national draft. And that's going to come to fruition or not in the next two to three years. It hasn't hurt them yet. I wonder if that's almost the story of this trade period as well because Sydney, other than the guys they've had tied to them through their academy, mm. has not drafted well for about four or five years. No. That's been a big flaw. Their first round picks, like 2021, Angus Sheldrick, Matt Roberts, Corey well, Warner. Dylan Stevens wants to be traded. He came in at pick five and now wants to get out of there and move to North Melbourne. Even so. last year, Jacob Constanti, their first round pick, the biggest thing he's done so far is unfortunately injured one of their best players. Oh, yes. oh, so no. they're not getting a lot out of the draft at the moment. He's, he's coming so, a long run with that one. So Sydney targeting players to make up, make amends for perhaps mistakes they've made in the past. And that's what Essendon might have to do too. Is this is going to be a big trade period in particular for the Western Bulldogs because of the deal they've already done and how we look at it in hindsight as well, Kingy. So the Dogs today have given up three first round picks, 10, 17 and their future first to acquire pick four from the Gold Coast Suns, a pick that has always been up for grabs because we know the Suns wanted to trade out that pick to acquire more draft points. And they've also got three third rounders, 46, 51 and a future third from the Suns. Why the significant investment? Because Sam Power said today that they know because of a very heavily compromised draft this year with all the Suns Academy players, there's two father-son players, including Jordan Croft from the Dogs uh, and Will McKay from the Hawks, that are going to be in that first round mix. They want to get ahead of everyone and because they know that the top 12, 13 is really, really strong. Nick Watson, from what I understand, is the player that they want. A small fraud from the Eastern Rangers who can Compares himself to Tom Papley and really enjoys uh, the, the banter on the field. It's a significant investment, though, to give up three first-round picks to try and get ahead of everyone else in the draft into a player. It could be Nick Watson. It could also be either the uh, the Tasmanian uh, midfielders in Riley Sanders or Colby McKercher. But it is a significant investment, Kingy, to go that hard. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love the aggression to, to back yourself in as a club. Bons and Pelly's, what's he got left at the absolute top of his game? Four or five four, years? Four or five, At yeah. the absolute peak, yeah. you know, ch- challenge for Brownlow medals. You've got to cash in now. So get these elite young picks in ahead of time. If you can draw it one year forward, it's huge to the, to the list uh, composition. I like the aggression. Some won't, and we'll judge it all, all this in hindsight. But right now I say go for it. And if it works, it works big. 
you're, you're back up there again, challenging after a year of a, a serious dip, really. So the pressure is on everyone at the football club. Um, but to make this decision, I think, is a beauty. You have so many trades nowadays where teams have conflicting needs yep. and also an understanding of what the draft pool is. And like you say, if there are eight, nine top prospects and they want to be in that bunch, it makes all the sense in the world. Purely on the numbers, Gold Coast wins this pick trade getting the equivalent of pick 14. But you can't evaluate every trade in that vacuum because of the factors I just mentioned. So you can understand them going all in. It's a problem if you do what Frio did in the Luke Jackson trade and be bad the year you trade out your future first. But the Bulldogs understandably trust themselves to think, hey, we should be good next year. If we're not playing finals again, it is a disaster again. So we need to go for it. I feel like that just emphasises how important next year is for them because now they've got things that are tied to next year as well as the fact that I think Luke Beveridge is under a fair bit of pressure externally. From the outside looking in, they're making a fair few changes to their coaching staff. They're, they're rejigging their whole department. So I think next year's a make or break year in many ways. And the fact that they've just given up a King's Ransom, pardon the pun, to mm. get pick four, I think that just reemphasizes. It's, not, it's it. not really a King's Ransom. We Given what you explained before, if you're getting ahead of the pick and you can use lesser picks for the talent that's mid-teens. Mm, yeah. in, in the it's a shallow draft. draft three, it's a shallow draft. And three first rounders. Yep. Yeah. And you're just dragging, you're dragging it one year forward. I think it's a great move. I think you've got to look at this whole thing in totality. You get a gun a year ahead of where you logically would have got him if you sat on your hands. You can't sit on your hands at footy club. Yep. We've seen what Collingwood did last year. It drew attention straight away. Bobby Hill, is he the man off Frampton? Frampton can't get a game down the road. What are you doing picking him? I mean, these are guys that are, have played significant roles in winning a premiership. You've got to get involved or you'll get left behind. Well, pick 10 is now with the Gold Coast Suns and I expect that pick to be split as well. I think there's a lot of clubs after that pick. That's going to be very, very in demand. Think Essendon, think Melbourne. Those kind of clubs are going to come for that pick. Before we let you go, Kingy, because we, you know you've probably got another cashier to go to oh. now. Everyone says, right, should West Coast me. trade pick one? But uh, and how I see it, North Melbourne is the only team that West Coast would probably do a deal with at the moment for pick two. Because uh, they want Dan Curtin, and Dan Curtin's not going to slide too much further than pick two. But would you see... Would you want to see North Melbourne make a serious play for pick one, considering the number of first-round picks that they've invested and used in previous years, and they've got a lot already this year? Is it time to go right to the top, considering Harley Reid being a generational talent? Well, you tell me, you keep telling me he's a generational talent. Yep. The words I like to hear. Yes. Um, I don't, I don't know is the, is the a simple answer. I, I don't know. I, I like the aggression to trade up and get it done. If it goes wrong, well, you live with it. Do, do West Coast need Harley Reid? Of course they do. Yep, do they so. need the other guy, Curtin? Of course they do. Um, it's more about what the West Coast need than, than North Melbourne, but the picks are there. I mean, the AFL have, have subsidised them heavily with concessions over the next couple of seasons, so there's there's a glut of picks they could use to, to satisfy the West Coast. So it's a perfect time for West Coast to dance and to say, this is what we want, bang, 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 and go for, go for the lot, scoop the pool. Um, and maybe deep down that's what the AFL need. They need West Coast to bounce back really quickly with a glut of picks and they need North Melbourne to probably get the best player in the draft. So as a, as a North Melbourne man with the links there, do you think that they're best served with Harley Reid at that club or do you think they need two or three top liners? Uh, have you seen them? <laughs> they need about six players <laughs> in every position. Um, no, it's tough. It's tough when you're down the bottom. These are the decisions you've got to, you've got to get right. Mm. Otherwise, you just cost yourself another another year or two, which has players fall off the other end. Um, look, you can't go wrong if you get to pick one. If you trade to pick one and get Harley Reid, you haven't made a mistake in any way, shape or form. And I deep down think the AFL gave that suite of picks to say, hey, get it. serious as a footy mm. club, get adventurous, give the fans something to watch of a Saturday afternoon. They've basically been taking two first-round picks a year for the last three seasons anyway. So there's no, giving them three more, okay, they're going to take 15 over a five-year period or something stupid. No, you can trade up and condense them because... You can get bulk plays in the door and you've needed that for a while, but at some point if you consolidate them into the absolute tippy-top prospects, that makes all the sense in the world. 